and uh, good morning everyone so today's talk is on uh, non stationary signal processing based methods for automated classification of eeg signals uh, in this talk we will see use of signal processing methods and machine learning techniques uh, for development of automated uh, systems that can be used for the classification of normal and abnormal uh, eeg signals and uh, we will see uh, some signal processing techniques like empirical mode decomposition and uh, uh, time frequency analysis based on the advanced vignette distribution and uh, multi wavelet transform and uh, we will see also see the extracted features based on these signal processing techniques and then based on these features uh, together with machine learning uh, methods uh, we will also uh, uh, see in this talk that uh, the automated system that we have designed uh, and these these systems can be used for the automated diagnosis of brain uh, disorders and which include uh, epilepsy disease uh, uh, sleep disorders and emotions so actually there there is a lot of scope these days uh, to develop this intelligent systems expert systems automated systems where automatically you can identify the uh, signal and based on the signal uh, you can find out the uh, state of the brain and uh, maybe like uh, depression stress anxiety uh, whatever like sleep uh, awake all these conditions they are associated with the actually the change in the eeg signal and that change in the eeg signal can be detected with the help of the signal processing and machine learning algorithms and uh, these expert systems or intelligent systems that we develop based on the signal processing machine learning methods that can be actually they can be installed in the form of a software uh, in the mobiles in the smartphones in the computers and this smartphone will become really smart and nicely actually a lot of actually uh, work can be done in automated manner and such kind of systems are very useful in the rural areas uh, where we don't have actually sufficient amount of doctors or sometimes no doctors and this mobile uh, the with algorithm can work as a diagnosis tool and this can be used for computer aided medical diagnosis so with this background uh, let us start this talk so this is the overview of this talk uh, first we will see introduction and after that we will see empirical mode decomposition uh, that we call emd based features for analysis of normal and seizure eeg signals and then we will see a classification of seizure and non seizure eeg signals and after that detection of epileptic seizures based on these emd methods and uh, after that uh, uh, we will actually uh, this time frequency distribution uh, that is also uh, one of the approach uh, for the handling non stressy signals and based on the energy is actually positive quantity so we can convert this time frequency representation into form of image so we will also see time frequency image based features uh, for classification of sleep stages uh, using eeg signals and after that multi wavelet decomposition based features uh, for human emotion classifications uh, will be uh, presented and in the end conclusion will be uh, provided so human brain actually is very complicated and it is highly nonlinear system like uh, if you record eeg signals in the morning and uh, suppose you are in the happy emotion and you are happy in the morning and you are also in afternoon you are happy but when when we record your signals they will change they are not actually uh, they are they are highly subjective in nature so due to that there is actually high variability of these signals and uh, they, they are highly nonlinear actually uh, uh, non linear systems means uh, like uh, they are generated from the brain and uh, this brain is a non linear system so when the signals actually they generate from non linear system uh, we call them non linear signals but it doesn't make sense it's uh, non linearity makes sense when we have system but uh, still like uh, we call non linear signals so it means that these signals are outcome of the non linear system so this brain is actually uh, one of the highly non linear system in this electroencephalogram which we call eeg uh, these signals major electrical activity which is generated by the neurons in the brain so brain actually has billion of neurons and uh, these neurons uh, they actually uh, they connect to each other and they, they provide this electrical activity and which is measured through the uh, this electrode cap that and that that is actually we call eeg signal electrical activity and this eeg signal is very useful technique uh, for investigating different uh, physiological and pathological pathological states of the human brain and if you have any brain related disorder any like anxiety stress uh, depression uh, uh, sleep disorders epilepsy parkinson disease alzheimer 
and if you go to doctor they will actually first take your eeg signal and so eeg signal is a one kind of signature uh, which is very useful uh, for the uh, detecting the disorder or detecting the, uh, the state of the brain uh, in the initial stage so uh, what actually uh, generally this eeg signals that uh, you must have seen in the hospitals uh, doctors they do visual scanning and uh, due to that is actually that has some problems that we will see in the next slide and uh, due to that there is actually a lot of scope for quantitative analysis of eeg signals which is very challenging because this eeg signals uh, they are very complicated and uh, uh, it has irregular nature uh, sometimes when you see eeg signal uh, it has actually chaotic it looks like chaotic signal and uh, uh, this signal is a non stacy signal so like uh, uh, in order to represent signal we use mathematical models and if any of the parameter of these models change with time then we call them non stacy signal and eeg signals fall in this class and uh, uh, it has been seen in the literature uh, that uh, uh, if you even you go for low scale of the data a very small amount of data very less uh, uh, segment of the eeg signal uh, then also it is non stationary so it is actually it is very difficult uh, to find the stationary part from the non stationary signal and if sometimes when you get the stationary part of the signal then there is no diagnosis information so due to that actually there is a lot of uh, challenge and uh, generally uh, what doctors do uh, when you go to hospital they take your eeg signal then they print off it on the page paper and then they perform visual scanning that is very time consuming and sometimes uh, uh, for example you are getting apt attacks epilepsy seizures and uh, for hours and uh, you are admitted in the hospital so like for 4 5 hours it is very difficult to take signals and every time you print on the paper then your doctor will uh, scan them visually and it may be inaccurate also suppose you take signals of large duration for example one hour then print it then all variations will be averaged out it will not be visible and it is very complicated and uh, due to actually it's also subjective judgment and uh, it suffers from human error so you must have seen that uh, like when we go to hospital like uh, a doctor says uh, he has epilepsy then actually we say let us have second opinion so like we go to other neurologist and uh, sometimes uh, two neurologists then this then we say that this like uh, both are saying same thing or both are different so this actually judgment whatever based on the uh, the sub person that is subjective in nature and it may suffer from human error and generally such kind of methods uh, that is performed by the trained professional they have actually expertise they have lot of training for doing such kind of work and due to these reasons uh, actually there is a lot of scope in the literature to explore uh, signal processing techniques to get the very good feature diagnostic feature that feature can be associated with the disease and uh, a machine learning methods so that like, uh, once you have features and these features actually can be used uh, for the automated identification and we can train and test the sustaining the system and we can develop the feature space and based on this uh, during testing phase we can classify the signals so in that way we can have intelligent systems uh, based on the uh, these features and uh, nicely actually classification can be done so this is the motivation for uh, doing this work or to develop the intelligent systems in order to classify uh, this eeg signals in order to uh, determine the state of the human brain so uh, first part in this talk is focus on epilepsy and we are actually we have uh, developed three methods uh, for analysis classification detection of epileptic seizures and uh, then second part uh, we will see uh, for sleep stages and the third part is dedicated to emotions so epileptic seizures actually uh, these are also known as uh, this is also an epilepsy and uh, this are the result of the transient and unexpected electrical disturbance of the brain so actually when this brain uh, there are men we have seen there are uh, huge amount of neurons and the, then they synchronize together then they generate very high electrical activity and due to that uh, this actually uh, this brain disturbs and uh, due to that brain's brain is the master of the body a brain is disturbed then all actually activities of the uh, person or body that, that are also disturbed and this all seizures actually they are not epileptic seizures and if the seizure is having repetition and recurrence then it is known as epileptic seizures so 
like uh, sometimes we call it is like uh, epilepsic epilepsy seizure because these seizures are associated with the epilepsy and they have some repetition recurrence or some uh, some like uh, frequency there and uh, this epilepsy disease uh, that actually it affects around 2% population of the world and uh, in this work we have proposed uh, three methods uh, the area parameter uh, for analysis of normal and epileptic seizure EG signals and then bandwidth parameters uh, for classification of seizure and non seizure EG signals and uh, after that instantaneous area uh, for the automated detection of epileptic seizures so these three methods we will see in the detail and uh, this is the actually overview of these three methods uh, which are based on the empirical mode decomposition and uh, before going uh, for empirical mode decomposition uh, uh, explanation or theory uh, let us uh, uh, understand the motivation for empirical mode decomposition so when you go for signal processing in the beginning uh, like uh, the commonly used method was that is fourier transform actually so fourier transform uh, what we do we represent signals in terms of uh, sinusoidal functions as a basis function see sinusoidal functions uh, they are periodic and they extend from minus infinity to plus infinity so due to their infinite spread uh, resolution uh, concentration or time localization that is proportional to one upon spread and since the spread of the sinusoidal function is infinite so due to that time localization becomes zero because this is inversely proportional to uh, spread so uh, due to that this time localization of the sinusoidal functions is zero and due to that they have not don't contribute in the time resolution and uh, these easy signals uh, they are non stacy signals. So non stacy signals means their properties or statistical parameters or their parameters of the models, they change with time. So the sinusoidal functions, they don't have parameter which change with time. So there is no matching uh, with the basis functions of the, and the signal. So these basis functions uh, like sinusoidal functions, they are not able to represent easy signals properly due to their non stacy nature. And uh, after that, in order to have uh, the suitable Fourier transform for non stacy signals like EG signal, then short time Fourier transform was proposed in the literature that we call STFT. So in short time Fourier transform, uh, what we do, we divide this EG signal into different, different segments, different, different windows. And each window, we assume that signal is stationary. Then we apply Fourier transform and arrangement of this Fourier transform gives us short time Fourier transform. In that way, we can analyze this non stationary EG signal. Uh, but short time Fourier transform also, that, that's, there is actually there is no thumb rule which will suggest you uh, what should be the size of the window and what should be the type of the window. And when you have low frequency component present in the signal, then we need to have wide analysis window. When you have high frequency component present in the signal, then we need to have narrow analysis window. So that flexibility uh, is not available in short time Fourier transform. And uh, due to that, uh, this actually uh, uh, wavelet transform was proposed and that there in wavelet we use scale concept and based on the scale like if you take low scale then it is suitable for uh, good uh, time resolution and high frequency components similarly large scale uh, that is suitable for low frequency component and uh, good frequency resolution poor time resolution so in that way we can have actually multi resolution analysis and we can analyze uh, the different different frequency components present in the signal with the required resolution with the desired resolution that is the beauty of the wavelet transform and this wavelet transform method can be implemented uh, with the help of the filter length that is uh, so like uh, we have signal and then we apply low pass filter high pass filter then we down sample by two approximation then we get the approximation detail again we can decompose approximation detail into different different parts so in that way actually we can decompose signal uh, into different different uh, uh, bands, different different components, and uh, here also uh, the main, main problem uh, there is no thumb rule which will suggest what should be the uh, mother wavelet uh, for the decomposition, and uh, how many number of labels are required to represent the signal, the label of the decomposition. So these two information actually uh, that is not known, and we do this with the like we determine the labels, then we based on tired and error method we study the which level number of labels are sufficient. So uh, motivated by that, uh, in 1998, this Wang and others, they actually proposed empirical mode decomposition. Uh, that is uh, different than the Fourier or, or wavelet kind of methods uh, for signal decomposition. 
So this empirical mode decomposition, it doesn't use any actually uh, design of basis functions. Uh, it actually, uh, initiative of that, we extract basis functions from the signal itself. So that is why you call them intrinsic. Because in other signal, like Fourier transform, we are designing sinusoidal functions from our side. In wavelet transform, we are designing wavelets from our side. But EMD method, we don't design any basis functions from our side. In each of that, we extract them from the signal set. So this is a difference. So that is these are the signals are actually uh, part of basis functions are the part of the signals. Like sinusoidal functions uh, are not part of the signal in Fourier transform. We represent signal in terms of sinusoidal functions. Similarly, wavelets, a signal doesn't have wavelet, but we represent wavelet signal in terms of wavelet. But here, whatever basis functions we extract, that is from the signal itself. So it has actually a lot of physical meaning. It, it may be a very suitable, such kind of basis functions uh, may be highly suitable for physiological interpretations because these basis functions or components, uh, they are part of the signal. So by using this EMD method uh, that we will see uh, some parts in the coming slides, we use a shifting algorithm and that is actually uh, this adaptive method and in that way uh, from the data we obtain the intrinsic mode functions uh, from the using EG, from the EG signals then these intrinsic mode functions uh, then we apply analytic signal representation on these IMFs and then uh, the area features based on the modified center image we, we compute and then this area feature then we apply Kruskal wise statistical test which provide you actually nice statistically significant difference uh, between normal and seizure EG signals. And other methods uh, based on this analytic IMFs, we determine amplitude modulation and frequency modulation bandwidth. And these bandwidth features we have given as an input to least square support vector machine classifier, which classifies this actually signal, whether it is seizure EG signal or non seizure EG signals. In third method, we determine instantaneous area feature uh, of the area actually uh, from this analytic IMF, then we, we have proposed some decision rules. And based on the CN rules, we detect the epileptic seizure. So these three methods will be explained in detail in this coming slides. And uh, uh, for actually uh, study purpose, we have taken this EG data set, uh, which is uh, uh, publicly available uh, by University of Bonn, Germany. And this data set actually includes uh, five subsets, Z, O, N, F, and S. And uh, this e Z subset includes signals, EG signals corresponding to eyes open. And those subset includes EG signal corresponding to eyes close, and both are from healthy uh, subjects. And N and F subsets include uh, EG signals recorded for seizure free case. So, and S subset S includes EG signals they are recorded from the seizure act activity, seizure subjects. And normal means uh, these people they never had epilepsy disease. Seizure free means earlier these persons were having epilepsy disease. Now treatment has been done, and now they, they are seizure free. They don't have seizures in the present time. And S means like uh, the seizure beast, they are uh, patient of epilepsy disease. So each subset actually includes 100 single channel EG signals and the duration of uh, these EG signals is uh, 23.6 seconds. And the sampling frequency of EG signals in this data set uh, is uh, 173.61 Hertz. That is actually, and uh, these signals have been recorded uh, with the 128 channel amplifier system based on the common reference and this neurologist uh, based, visual, based on the visual inspection uh, from the GG signals he has actually selected uh, the seizure, seizure free and normal signals uh, for his study purpose. An empirical mode decomposition uh, that is called EMD method which is suitable for non-linear non, non stage signal analysis and this method is adaptive method and doesn't require any condition of stationarity of the data. So whatever signal you give, whatever uh, data you give, it, it will not check any condition uh, and nicely you can decompose any data. Whatever data you give, it give you components. It give you in IMFs, in tiny mode functions. And this method data dependent and uh, does not require a design of basis functions uh, like uh, wavelet in wavelet transform or Fourier uh, sinusoidal functions in Fourier transform. And this EMD method uh, can decompose a signal into set of narrowband intrinsic mode functions, IMFs. And these IMFs can be modeled using this amplitude and frequency modulated signal or AMFM signal model. So that is actually like, uh, so sometimes we can consider 
the CMD method as a general form or generalized form of the Fourier transform, you know, Fourier representation, where we represent signal in terms of sinusoidal functions whose parameters are constant. But here, this is a more general form of the sinusoidal components. Or we allow uh, these components like amplitude and frequency to vary with time. So which results say amplitude and frequency modulated signal model. So each IMF uh, that actually be obtained using this EMD method satisfy two basic conditions. Uh, the first one number of extrema and the number of zero crossings must be the same or differ at most by one. So this condition actually ensure that uh, whatever IMFs you obtain, they are like sine cosine function. And uh, second condition is the mean value of the envelopes, which is defined by the local maxima and local minima zero. So this condition ensures that like uh, these IMFs, they are like symmetric functions. So this actually by satisfying these two conditions, uh, we guarantee that whatever the basis functions we obtain, they are like similar to sine cosine function and symmetric. And these basis functions are computed based on the this uh, residual and like uh, maybe whenever like we are obtain the IMF, then we determine a residual, subtract from the signal, then again we use this another signal. So in that way, then we will get another IMF. So then again, we will subtract these two IMFs, then we will get third IMF. So in that way, uh, we go get all possible IMFs from the signal. And in the end, uh, the, the decomposition signal can be represented as a sum of IMFs plus residual. So that you can see the equation one, uh, we have num capital M number of IMFs. And uh, after that, there is no uh, IMF uh, can be derived. So that we call it residual because that further IMF extraction is not possible. So this is the one example of the EMD of EG signal that you can see. So in the EG signal that you see, actually that has impulses, spikes, and uh, like, uh, so there is synchronization of the neuron in the brain, then all neurons, they, they combine together and generates very high electrical activity. So you can see the EG signal that is the presence of spikes and the presence of large amplitude. So this now we apply when apply EMD method on the signal apply procedure, then you can have nice well behaved IMFs, IMF one, IMF two, IMF three, and up to IMF eight. So IMF one represents the high frequency component and which is corresponding to low scale. And similarly, IMF eight represents the lowest frequency component, uh, which is equal to large scale. And we can call IMF one as a detail component and. Uh, I am a bad approximation component. So these components are arranged from high frequency to uh, low frequency side and the high frequency to low frequency actually uh, order. And the last one is residual. So in the proposed method, actually we have computed analytic signal representation using Hilbert transform uh, for these IMFs. And this, for example, like uh, if you have seat signal CT and plus J times its Hilbert transform C cap T, then you get the jet that is analytic signal, at e to power j phi t. So this analytic signal representation of mth IMF can be given by the equation two. So where are your amplitude and this phase, they are time varying and this is complex signal. So this analytic signal representation of IMFs uh, satisfy uh, two conditions. Uh, first condition plot has direction of rotation and uh, in the rotation in the plot has unique center. So these two conditions are very useful uh, for determining the feature. And uh, here you can see analytic signal representation of EG signal and score IMFs. So uh, case of EG signal, there is no geometry and there is no, uh, you cannot see any circular form. And there is a presence of multiple actually cycles. So that, that makes difficult to define any parameter uh, as a feature. On the other hand, if you see the analytic signal representation of IMFs, IMF1, IMF2, IMF3, IMF4, uh, there is presence of circular symmetry and that actually by that you can uh, determine nicely area parameter and that because it has unique center and rotation has unique direction so based on that we have defined area parameter and this is actually a motivation and we have also observed that when you have epileptic seizures then this area parameter becomes larger and uh, when you have normal then area becomes less it is very actually it is good feature uh, for common people uh, they based on this uh, visualization based on this parameter uh, they can interpret the disease level. So how to compute this area automated manner? So for that, uh, we have actually uh, proposed uh, this modified uh, center tendency measure uh, that is actually, uh, so 
uh, for that suppose you have n is the total number of points and r is the radius of the central area then modify ctm can be given by the equation 3 and here you can see this delta uh, dn that is actually that is one if your parameter is uh, falling uh, inside the this defined radius otherwise it is zero so in that way the ctm tells us uh, how many points out of these capital n number of points are uh, inside the radius or falling inside the radius so uh, that ctm actually we have computed corresponding to 95 percent ctm uh, for the area of analytic IMFs and uh, this area is computed based on the for equation a equals to pi r square and uh, uh, the, for this radius uh, the CTM provides 95 percent points of the total data points which lie in the circle corresponding to this RCTM that already we have seen and after that we have proposed instantaneous area of analytic IMFs so this instantaneous area is measured uh, from the trace of the window of analytic IMF. So what you do, we have IMFs, then we have segmented different pent parts, and then we have computed analytic signal representation of each part. And uh, based on that, we have interpolated the computed area from each part that gives you instantaneous area. So instantaneous area at, at, at any point is computed uh, based on moving window method. And the chosen size of each moving window is uh, 3840 samples and uh, this window size is uniform for all EG signals and mathematically this instantaneous area of m the IMF is defined by the equation uh, 4 and uh, after that actually uh, we have uh, defined this AM FM bandwidth of analytic IMFs and uh, generally what we do uh, we when we apply this actually when we talk about the bandwidth of the signal we talk about the Fourier transform and we compute Fourier transform and we see the spread of the signal in frequency domain. That gives you the bandwidth, the spread of the signal in the frequency domain. But here actually, uh, this spread of the, this uh, Cohen and Lee in 1990, they have shown that this spread of the signal depends on the two parameters, bandwidth, like amplitude variation and frequency variation. So based on this actually uh, measurement, uh, this bandwidth, uh, there are two types of bandwidth in that total bandwidth that is one is bandwidth due to amplitude modulation another one is bandwidth due to frequency modulation so this total bandwidth uh, depends on these two bandwidth parameters and uh, uh, this actually these two bandwidths uh, requires your signal to should be amfm signal it should be amplitude and frequency modulated signal and how to get amplitude and frequency modulated signal in real life it is very difficult and whatever signals in real life we observe or we encounter, they are multi-component AMFM signal. So this empirical mode decomposition method gives us an opportunity or gives us a platform uh, where nicely we can represent signal in terms of mono-component AMFM signal. And once you have AMFM component, then nicely you can compute these bandwidth that define the equation 5. The first one depends on the time varying amplitude that is bandwidth due to amplitude modulation and second bandwidth that is bandwidth due to frequency modulation it depends on the instantaneous frequency so or frequency variation so in that way both the bandwidth actually uh, can be computed and uh, so now uh, now we will see uh, some results uh, first one is for analysis of normal seizure e signals so the subset z and uh, the data is from the normal class and subset s from the seizure class and this method can detect patients with epilepsy uh, from the EG signals uh, or normal people. And this EMD based decomposition makes possible to cover more than 95% of the data points uh, which lie within the circle uh, due to having circular form of the analytic IMFs. And the area parameter that actually have been estimated for both the classes, normal and seizure, uh, based on the analytic signal representation of IMFs of various window lengths. That is 500, 1000, 2000, 4000 samples. So this actually, uh, this figure shows the uh, result here. You can see the CTM in terms of percentage versus radius. So like your uh, radius, for example, case of normal, uh, 300 radius is sufficient to get the 100% CTM. On the other hand, if you see the uh, seizure case, uh, the requirement of radius is 1200 in order to get the CTM 100%. So the requirement of actually radius is more for the seizure case and requirement of radius is less in case of normal and uh, it motivated us to actually uh, compute the area parameter because radius is higher so corresponding area will be higher 
ADS is less, so corresponding area will be less. That is uh, motivation for exploring this area parameter for uh, discriminating between seizure and normal EEG signals. So this is a, these are the actually uh, box plots that we have all obtained using Kruskal statistical test and for window length of 4,000 samples and for the different IMFs, IMF 1, 2, 3, 4 and for seizure and normal cases. And uh, here you can see these probability values that are coming zero. So that is actually a probability value is coming less than 0 0.05 or 5%. Then we call it a statistically significant difference. And nicely, uh, these normal and seizure classes, uh, they are nicely statistically significant different uh, based on these parameters. Uh, that is actually uh, uh, evidence from the Kruskal-Weiss statistical test. And that same thing we have observed for the window length of uh, 2048 samples uh, for the both classes, normal and seizure. Uh, and here also uh, the probability value that we are getting for this discrimination between these two classes based on the four IMF, seizure and normal, that is also coming out to be zero. So that is that shows that there is also a statistically significant difference between these two classes. And then same study we have done for 2000 samples uh, length of the data. And uh, here you also you can see uh, we can have a statistically significant difference between normal and seizure classes of each sector based on these four IMFs and with probability value equals to zero. And that is true for 1000 samples also. We have a good statistically significant difference. We are getting probability values coming out to be zero for all uh, four IMFs uh, for seizure and normal classes. And for 500 samples that also actually we have studied and uh, here we can see we can get good discrimination uh, with probability equals to zero. So that is statistically significant difference between seizure and uh, normal classes of uh, using these EG signals of the I based on the IMFs. Whatever we have seen in the form of graphs or these box plots, now we have shown in the form of table. And here you can see uh, for the normal seizure subjects, this uh, different window size 500, 1000, 2000, 4000 samples. And the four first IMF, IMF, second, third, fourth, four, first for IMFs, uh, this uh, so the minimum ma median and maximum value of the area parameter and uh, in case of seizure uh, this area parameter is higher as compared to the normal case so that is actually and then we have compared uh, our proposed method with other existing methods in the literature so Nigam and others 2004 they they use some uh, signal processing machine learning methods they got 97.2 percent classification equity. there are other methods also proposed by Srinivasan uh, and others in 2005, Anathal and others in 2005, Polat and others in 2006, Subhasi and 2007. In all these methods, they use some kind of signal processing and machine learning methods, and they get actually uh, accuracy that is uh, more than 90% and uh, less than 100%. And uh, proposed method, which doesn't use any machine learning algorithm, it is based on the simple threshold. And uh, that is actually, that provides 100% So that the signal processing technique or feature uh, that we have extracted, that actually that itself is able to classify the classes, that is able to separate these two classes in a statistically significant manner. So that is no need. So this actually selection of the spoon depends on the type of food. And uh, uh, similarly, the selection of the signal processing techniques depends on the type of signal. And nicely we have got actually a uh, good signal and IC technique, which is required for the uh, the signals actually that is studied. So uh, uh, without machine learning, actually we have got 100% accuracy. And uh, after that, we have studied classification of seizure and non-seizure EG signals. And uh, from the database, uh, JADO, NNF, they are combined to form the non-seizure class and subset S from the seizure class. And uh, this compatible method we have proposed that can detect patients which have epilepsy from the normal and seizure free people. And this uh, combination of normal and seizure free is known as non seizure. And uh, this EMD method uh, can decompose uh, this is EG signal to set of AMFM components. And then you can compute uh, bandwidth due to amplitude modulation and frequency modulation. And uh, here you can see uh, this is the actual results of the bandwidth due to amplitude modulation uh, for the first IMFs. Uh, and then in the lower part, we have shown the result uh, for the bandwidth due to amplification for the remaining IM, 58th IM. And the first four IMFs, uh, these bandwidth due to amplification modulation parameter that is able to uh, show the difference. But remaining IMFs don't show any difference between seizure and non-seizure classes. Similar observation is actually 
uh, true for uh, this bandwidth due to frequency modulation. So here, the first uh, first case you can see for the first four IMFs, uh, this bandwidth due to frequency modulation is able to show the difference between uh, seizure and non seizure classes. And uh, the remaining IMFs, fifth to eighth IMFs, uh, they are not able to show the difference between these two classes. So that is also actually we have seen uh, with the Kruskal biostatistical test. Uh, where actually we have computed uh, these probability values and you can see the first four IMFs probability values less than 0.05 and the remaining IMFs uh, these probability values are greater than 0.05. So the first four IMF this was a statistically significant difference between these two classes seizure and non-seizure and then we based on that uh, statistical significance nature we have given these features as an input to uh, machine learning based classifier that least least discuss support vector machine classifier in order to obtain more accurate classification because last uh, case when you are classifying seizure and non seizure and normal uh, they are well separated uh, by the box plot so you, it is easy to uh, choose the threshold but here these box plots you can see they are not well separated so in order to have more accurate uh, separation we have to go for higher dimensional space that is done by the lssbm and where we can separate these classes so least square support vector machine uh, that is actually in equation six you can see the very uh, simple way we can represent with the decision function in the support vector machine and this least square support vector machine the improved version of the support vector machine and uh, this fx equal to sine wtgx plus b this is the decision function and w is the l dimension weight vector gx is the mapping function and b is the bias and based on the uh, these actually this decision sign function it is coming plus then we say it is uh, first class and minus then second class so we can do binary classification uh, by by the help of the support vector machine or its uh, improved version lssbm so this is just a very simple block diagram representation of the square support vector machine classifier we extract the features from the data and then we uh, some of the features we use for training purpose and together with kernel functions parameters we train the classifier, LSS even classifier, and once we have this trained classification system, then we use the remaining feature as a testing set, and uh, based on the fund decision, like if it is giving uh, sign uh, this WTGX plus B, if it is plus, then we say it is seizure, otherwise it is non-seizure. So binary classification can be performed. So in this work, uh, we have actually used polynomial kernel, which is uh, defined by the equation seven, and radial basis function, which is defined mathematically by equation eight, and Mexican head wavelet kernel function, which is defined by the equation 9, and wallet wavelet kernel function, which is defined by the equation 10. And uh, three classification performance measures have been used, which are sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy. And uh, mathematically, uh, they are actually the mathematical expressions are shown uh, in this slide. Uh, sensitivity the proportion of epileptic seizures, which is correctly detected by the algorithm. And the specificity is the proportion of segments without seizures, which are correctly identified by the algorithm. And accuracy shows the proportion of correctly detected seizures and without seizures by the algorithm. And uh, in the mathematical expressions, uh, TP represents true positive, FN represents false negative, and TN represents true negative, and FP represents false positive. So after that, uh, this uh, this table shows the sensitivity, specificity, and accuracy for measures of IMFs with different kernels of the LSSM classifier for classification between non-seizure and seizure easy signals. So kernel functions, so you can see the stable polynomial RVF, Mexican and Mollet, and the kernel parameters that actually that have been used based on trial and error method, and which have provided better classification performance. And the statistical parameters, that is sensory specific accuracy, and you can see the uh, minimum and maximum obtained classification accuracies uh, in the 10 trials uh, for the uh, first four IMFs. And uh, you can see the Morlet wavelet kernel function uh, for the second IMF provides better classification performance. And that is also actually uh, we have uh, validated with the receiver operating characteristics. So area under the receiver operating characteristics, ROC curve, uh, shows that actually uh, if area is approaching to one, this means it is better classified. It is perfect classification system. So uh, we have compared area under ROC curve uh, for this all this uh, kernel system, this kernel polynomial RVF, Mexican, Mexican, and Mollet. And we have observed that Mollet area under curve is equal to 1. That is actually ROC, the plot of the sensitivity versus 1 minus specificity. And nicely, uh, you can have uh, so this uh, uh, Mollet case area under curve is coming out to 1. So this also validated that a Mollet kernel is 
uh, side is suitable for the classification in better way uh, for normal uh, for non seizure and seizure easy signals and this actually this is a feature set this is very useful results uh, which can be used for the automated identification of eeg signals so based on the this feature which is after training we got this testing set feature space and which is uh, uh, studied for the testing features features uh, for testing set and uh, this actually these uh, this kind of uh, decision boundaries or decision system decision making system can be used for the uh, diagnosis of the diseases in the rural areas like uh, we can install these method these algorithms in the mobile and record eeg signal and determine the imfs and the select second imf then you can determine these features and then features can be uh, uh, mapped here in the feature space and nicely uh, nicely you can see uh, like suppose this is feature is mapped in the uh, dark region sided region then we call it seizure otherwise it is non seizure so we have also actually compared uh, this proposed method with other existing methods in the literature like tajalas okak liang ling and they have proposed various methods based on signal processing machine learning techniques and they got various classification accuracies and our proposed method that is based on empirical mode decomposition and bandwidth features and uh, least square support vector machine classifier which provides a classification accuracy of 99.5 to 100% that is better than the other existing methods uh, which have studied in the same database so this our proposed method actually is uh, giving better performance as compared to the other existing methods in the literature for the same database and after that we have actually proposed epileptic seizure detection algorithm and the detection of epileptic seizure uh, that we have seen based on the visual inspection has many uh, limitations uh, many problems and is very uh, time consuming task and it, like it can be inaccurate uh, especially for long data recordings so when a seizure occurs uh, the automated seizure detection method can help in providing immediate requirement required treatment for the epileptic patient so in this actually method we have used steadiness area parameter uh, that we have developed based on the that's different different areas of the segments of the imfs of eeg signals and then based on the steadiness area we have proposed a method for detecting epileptic seizures in real time and this eeg data set which is publicly available by the university of freiburg germany has been used in this work and uh, this actually it has uh, this data set has invasive eeg recordings of 21 patients suffering from medically intractable focal epilepsy so there are actually two types of eeg recording one is uh, invasive and second one non invasive Inves non invasive like uh, surface eeg recording uh, we put electrodes on the eye school and uh, like uh, the cap and uh, we record signals that is actually uh, for generalized seizures uh, we generally another activity we record signals and uh, for invasive eeg we actually we need to do some surgery and uh, they are recorded signals from the inside of the brain and for that, uh, this I'll come to focal epilepsy case, uh, around 80% of uh, the diseases, 80% uh, focal epileptic subjects, they are drug resistant. And, uh, and then there is only option left, which is surgery. And so in order to have actually surgery, in order to have the removal of that area of the focal epilepsy, uh, we need to identify the reason where surgery has to be done. So that focal, focal EG signals identification plays important role uh, to perform that surgery. So there is a lot of scope to identify accurately the region of the brain which is affected by the focal epilepsy using EEG signals. So this EEG data which we acquired uh, based on the digital video EEG system with 128 channels and uh, 256 hertz sampling rate and uh, 60 bit scenario to digital converter. And in this study, three intra-source records of nine patients which have focal epilepsy uh, originated in the temporal lobe region have been selected. And uh, in that way, we have total 90 segments uh, per each channel and 51 of them without uh, like uh, their seizure free and 39 segments denoted as having only one epileptic seizure. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Okay, well, thank you, thank you, thank you. So uh, this example, uh, here it is very actually nice example so like you can see the EG signal and in the middle it has epileptic episode but when you see the signal 
uh, it is not clear that epileptic episode but when you decompose the signal in terms of imfs imf1 imf2 imf3 uh, then it, you can see nicely this second and third imf and they show the epileptic episode in better way so it boost up uh, this uh, episode uh, in the in the signal in the imfs uh, when you compute instantaneous area of these imf1 imf2 imf3 then nicely you can see uh, this instantaneous area for first IMF, instant area of second IMF, third IMF, they are nicely showing the presence of epileptic episode. And uh, and then we have compared actually uh, this uh, the beginning uh, onset or offset beginning and ending of this epileptic episode uh, that is uh, detected by our algorithm which is shown by the circles. And uh, this uh, dashed line uh, that actually which are actually shown by the which are obtained from the neurologist. So this is a benchmark. And whatever uh, this beginning and ending we have detected, that is also falling in the actually uh, validated, uh, falling in the, uh, or they are according to in the, the, they are accordance with the, the detected beginning and ending points by the neurologist. So that is actually one of the uh, advantages or uh, one of the feature of this proposed actually uh, uh, proposed feature, uh, parameter and which can uh, validate, uh, which is validating the neurologist decision. And how to make now decisions? Uh, so this epileptic seizure detection uh, based on the instantaneous area of IMFs has been performed by the following decision rules. So we have proposed three decision rules uh, for the automated seizure detection. And the first decision rule actually requires the computation of threshold of instantaneous area of IMFs of EEG signals for all channels. And the threshold of the mth IMF is uh, computed by the equation 11. And that is actually derived empirically and based on the study of the database and second decision rule requires the identification of which uh, those seizure activities uh, which are present in at least two of the three instantaneous area of imf of each channel and third rule actually uh, requires making an interchannel decision uh, by identifying those seizure activities which are available in at least two of the three channels uh, where presence of seizure activity in each channel is decided by the rule two so in that way, uh, based on the majority uh, out of three channels, if two channels are in the support of uh, seizure activity, then we call it seizure. Uh, if they are in the favor of seizure free, then we call it seizure. Activity. So it based on the majority out of three, we have taken the decision and then that way we identify the uh, this activity, whether it is seizure or seizure free. So these are the performance evaluation parameters, which you can see in this table uh, for the different patient segments and uh, uh, this true positive, two negative, fast positive, fast negative, then computed a per performance evaluation parameter. Sensitivity, specificity, specificity that already we have seen in the previous slides. And PPV, that is called positive predictive value, NPV, that is negative predictive value, and ERD, that is error rate detection. These, uh, these parameters, uh, computation, you can see the mathematical expressions in the, in the bottom of this slide. And uh, uh, from that actually uh, we can compute these parameters and uh, this sensitivity specificity ppv and pv they actually they are expected to be higher and eid is expected to be less and uh, you can see in the table and uh, these parameters like uh, they are sensitivity specificity ppv and they are coming higher also and eid is coming less so uh, the parameters whatever we have obtained this performance measures they are according to requirement and then we have compared uh, our method with other existing methods in the literature for epileptic seizure detection. So R square other to the nine, they use energy of IMFs of EEG signals, and they got actually uh, different dependent parameters. You can see the table such as specific PPV and PVRD and Korea other to the nine, they they use energy of EEG signals, and they got various um, performance measures that that's shown in the table. In the proposed method, uh, actually we have used instantaneous area measure of the analytic IMF of each signal and uh, that gives you better sensitivity, better specificity, better PPV, better NPV than other existing methods and uh, less ERD as compared to that. So we are actually, uh, our method is providing better performance uh, as compared to the other existing methods in the literature which have been studied on the uh, same database. And after that, uh, we have actually proposed time frequency image based features uh, for classification of uh, sleep stages and these EEG signals are commonly used signals for the classification of sleep stages and uh, 
Sleep classification of sleep stress is a multi-class classification problem and very useful in the diagnosis of sleep disorders. And uh, the standard method of sleep recording, and this is actually uh, based on the RNK standard, which was proposed in 1964-5. And according to RNK standard, the sleep actually includes six uh, different vigilance stages, namely like awake, non-rapid eye movement, S1, S2, S3, S4, and rapid eye movement, RAM. So this RAM rapid eye movement that is very useful stage, that is uh, in, like in the morning time, uh, three to five, that in India we call it Brahma Murta. And uh, that is actually, is also uh, responsible for the dreams. Uh, and alcoholic people, uh, they don't cover this rapid eye movement stage. Like somebody that takes alcohol, actually he, he doesn't, uh, he cannot see dreams because he doesn't have a rapid eye movement stage. And that is why actually, uh, this alcoholic people uh, indirectly they are accumulating the sleep disorders that is not good for health that is like uh, the issue of six sleep stages uh, they cover only five sleep stages and this uh, rapid eye movement that actually that is very useful state that is not a deep sleeping and uh, in villages if you see if you have seen some dream and uh, night and if you tell to your family members tell to your uh, like village people and uh, they will ask you uh, like you have seen the dream and if you tell to them they will ask you what time you have seen the dream so if you have seen in the morning then this dream may be true if you see in the night then may not be true like that they interpret it so actually uh, this morning time rapid eye movement that is uh, that deep sleeping and uh, there is a lot of research is going on uh, they actually they interpret uh, the dreams and uh, like they saw the different different objects if you see the elephant, if you see the scorpion, if you see the snake, then what is the interpretation? And they, they are recording different EEG signals and they are identifying and the, the, what objects you have seen, what is the interpretation with the, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, whatever uh, like happens. So in rural areas, like suppose some girl has seen the Bengals in the dreams, then they interpret that she is going to get married this year and everybody actually uh, in happy place, the nice celebration will be there. Some functions will be there. So they interpret like uh, this. So these various uh, uh, these uh, different different objects, whatever you see in the day, they have some interpretations. And lot of actually uh, old time people used to predict. And like in Ramayana, uh, this Mandodari predicted in the dream. She has seen the dream that her husband is going to die. Ravana is going to die. And she uh, conveyed this information to Ravana that she has seen in the dream uh, you are going to die. So that uh, actually that prediction was done. So that's uh, uh, the dreams also can have some information that is uh, that the people are trying to understand. This is also one of the actually area where people are exploring EEG signals and the, what is the connection with the different different objects and uh, corresponding interpretations. And uh, recently, uh, this American Academy of Sleep Medicine uh, they have uh, they have actually uh, uh, they have developed another sleep standard sleep standard where the sleep stages S3 and S4 of RNK standard uh, is combined to single stage, which is known as slow wave sleep or deep sleep. And the manual method uh, for classification of sleep. So in this uh, American Academy of Sleep Medicine, initial of uh, uh, like six stages, now we have five stages. So this manual method of classification of sleep stage is very time consuming. And that is prone to inter and inter source color variability. So due to that, actually, in this work, uh, we have proposed multiple classification problem, multi classification problem based on the uh, least square support vector machine method. And that is a there are manual method has a lot of problems, and uh, and this is this can be solved with the help of machine learning methods. So this is a proposed methodology. We have easy signals of sleep stages, like six sleep stages. Then uh, we have uh, obtained time frequency representation based on the pseudo big navelly distribution method. And then we obtain time frequency image using this time frequency representation. And then we perform segmentation of time frequency image of EEG signals based on the frequency bands of the thumbs. And then features based on the histogram of sub images of the EEG signals are obtained. Then we give them as an input to multi-class least square support vector machine classifier, which will classify into six classes according to RNK standard and five classes according to American Academy of Sleep Medicine. So this is the actually uh, for the study purpose, we have taken uh, publicly available PhysioNet database. And uh, uh, in this actually, this, uh, this database is recording from eight males and female subjects whose age vary from 21 to 35 years. And the recording includes the EG signals which are sampled at 100 hertz. And according to RNK standard, 
uh, they are arranged into six classes and these EEG signals are recorded uh, from 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock in the morning. So five hours time is sufficient time to include these all six CDP stages. And this is the actually uh, smooth pseudo wing average distribution uh, obtained by this mathematical expression which is shown in equation 11 for the EEG signal corresponding to REM stage. And then this is the gray image representation of time frequency made based on the smooth pseudo wignable distribution of REM sleep stage of EEG signal. And then this is all the gray and binary sub images represent the time frequency image uh, corresponding to different frequency band delta, rhythm, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma rhythms. Then we have actually obtained the histogram of gray and binary sub images of time frequency image uh, corresponding to frequency band delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma rhythms. Uh, then these are the features we have proposed maximum count of pixel intensity in the histogram of gray sub image, which is shown by equation 12. Spread of in the aspect, um, histogram of gray sub image shown by equation 13, and aspect ratio in the histogram of binary sub images defined by the equation 14. And then we have to use multi class Ishuka support vector machine classifier, which is a uh, generalized general form of the binary classifier and so on by the equation 15. So here we need multiple class, uh, multiple classes, we have multiple kernels for classifying them. So for that purpose, we have used radial basis function is kernel shown by the equation 16 for the kth class and the Mexican head wavelet kernel function and all head wavelet kernel function which are shown by the equation 17 18 respectively. And uh, this actually, this table shows the uh, results uh, without segmentation of time frequency image with segmentation of time frequency. So we have seen when you perform segmentation of time frequency image, then there is significant improvement in the classification performance. So that this motivated us to perform the segmentation and you can see from this uh, table uh, like for example, mollet, uh, when we are, we are not doing segmentation in that term form of thumbs, uh, then you get 79.99% accuracy. And when you are performing segmentation, then you get 92.93%. So there is huge improvement in the classification performance. So we have motive, we have used the segmentation process of the time frequency image for the classification. And this shows the table shows the confusion matrix for the classification accuracy of the sleep stages of these signals or molded wavelet kernel with window size of 64 samples. And then we have compared our method with other existing methods in the literature, Doran, Sonkov, and others 27, and Boral and others 2010. They proposed uh, various methods based on signal process machine learning methods, and they got uh, total accuracy of 61.08%, 69.98%. Our proposed method, which is based on the time frequency image-based features and multi-class G-square support vector machine classifier, and we saw the actually a classification accuracy of 88.47 percent, which is higher than the other existing methods in the literature. And American Academy of Sleep Medicine, there is very less work is done, and that time only one method was available. Sue and others to, uh, they proposed energy-based features and lemon lemon neural classifier. They got 87.20 percent classification accuracy, and our proposed method, and uh, that provides 92.93 percent on this database. And after that, actually, uh, we have proposed multi wavelet transform based features for human emotion classification. And these EEG signals are very useful uh, for different emotional states, which can help us to understand physiology and psychology of the human brain. And emotions, they also can be measured with other kind of signals like speech and face images. But uh, it is actually, it is easy to modify the face. And similarly, speech also can be modified. So the whatever, uh, sometimes these emotions, uh, this they are based on the face images and based on the speech they can be misleading. So what we believe the CEG signals they are more advantageous for the measuring emotions and uh, which is actually they are recorded from the uh, brain uh, when and they are they are they are represent the electrical activity of the brain it is very difficult to influence them. And this kind of EG signal based emotion is very useful for developing brain computer face system BCA system. And it can help us help assisting. It can assist the physically disabled people and impaired people to interact with the real world. Like somebody is not able to speak, and we can take EEG signals. And suppose he's not well, and we can provide him medicines. If he after taking medicines, he's feeling happy, and then based on that EEG signals, we can detect that person is happy. So this means treatment is showing effect. So in that way, it, the person can interact with the real real world, and people will know what is actually happening. So that is very a good tool for the BCI where people are not able to communicate. So this is the block diagram of the proposed methodology. First, we have experimental setup, then pre-processing, then multi-wavelet transform, then nuclear distance-based features from 3D phase-specific construction. 
and then we have multi class tissue class support vector machine classifier so it will automatically classify happy neutral sadness and fear emotions so eeg signals that have been collected from the eight healthy subjects uh, during audio video stimulus and these subjects were the undergraduate students or, or employees from iit indore and switching channel eeg module is uh, in compliance to the international 2020 system has been used for the recording of eeg signals and the sampling frequency actually is 1000 hertz of the eeg signals with bipolar montes for this study and this study has examined four emotional states which includes happy neutral sadness and fear and uh, we have three audio video stimulus, five tires of each motion from eight subjects with F3, F4 channel of each signals have been used. And total we have 480 EG signals and uh, with two second duration. So this, uh, this here you can see this uh, figures. So the, uh, the location of the electrodes which have been used for the recording and uh, this was the valence and arousal and valence uh, diagram where these all emotions are uh, situated, located. So this is the uh, block diagram of complete methodology. So the subject is watching a video and from that EEG signals are actually, uh, the emotions are introduced and uh, then this EEG signals uh, correspond to that emotions are recorded and uh, it, the, sometimes the signals can have unwanted frequency component. They can have eye blinking effect, they can have noise. So this during pre-processing we can remove them. Then we apply non stress signal decomposition technique, which give you well-behaved components. Then we extract features and then we perform classification. So this multi-wavelet is the extension of the idea of a scalar wavelet, where multiple scaling functions and associated multiple wavelets are used instead of single one. So this multi-wavelet has many advantages, uh, which include simultaneously orthogonality, sort support, symmetry, and second order approximation. And the three commonly used multi wavelets uh, which are employed in this work, they are GHM, CL, and SC4. And uh, then actually once you have uh, this multi wavelet decomposition, then we have used uh, three dimensional phase space representation uh, of these subbands. So this is a, uh, this provides actually uh, non-linear dynamics in high dimensional space. Nicely you can represent non-linearity presented the subband signals based on this. And then mathematically, this uh, phase space reconstruction of the subband signals by represent by this uh, formula and this is the one example of phase space reconstruction for the third level sub signals so third level then there will be four subbands one is approximation three details so this you can see the psr plot three dimensional phase space reconstruction and there is a variability and now how to quantify uh, this variability or this data which is uh, uh, situated in three dimensional phase space representation so then we have proposed mean of Victorian distance and standard deviation of Victorian distance parameters, which can quantify these changes, which are linked with the emotions. And this Euclidean distance is computed using this formula for the three-dimensional. And you can extend this for multiple dimensions. We have done only for three-dimensional case. And so this, uh, now we'll see experimental results. And we have used GHM CLSA for multi wavelets. Then we have your three level decomposition. Then four sub band sub signals will be there. Then we obtain three dimensional phase space representation reconstruction. And then we have used mean and standard deviation of frequent distances from this 3D PSR as a feature. Then we have given these features as an input to multi class C square support vector machine classifier with RBF kernel, Mexican head, and model wavelet kernel functions. So this table shows the results uh, for different multi wavelet GHM, SA4, CL, and uh, kernel function parameter are op open and based on tire and error, and the happy, neutral, sad, and fear emotions. And you can see the CL multi wavelet case, uh, you can get 91.04% total accuracy. This is higher than the other existing methods in the data. This other multi wavelet based method. So the CL multi wavelet has given better performance together with multi wavelet kernel function. And this is the confusion matrix of modulated wavelet kernel function for the multi class G square support vector machine classifier for classification of emotions using EG signals with CL multi wavelet. And then we have compared our uh, proposed method with other existing methods in the literature, while Lin and others, uh, Dang and others, uh, they use music, video, and different number of channels 2462 and the signal processing and machine learning methods. And they got accuracy 82.29%, 66.5. And our proposed method which is based on audio video stimulus, it got uh, accuracy of 91.04%. So this our method provides better classification than the existing methods in the literature. So this is the conclusion of this entire talk. Uh, 
so the area measured uh, from the trace of the anatic IMFs, which have circular form in the complex plane, can be used uh, to discriminate normal and CRG signals. And the bandwidth parameters, uh, actually, the bandwidth due to amplitude modulation and bandwidth due to frequency modulation of IMFs of these signals can be used uh, to discriminate or to classify CRG and non CRG signals uh, with uh, better classification performance. And uh, we have also proposed a patient dispatch system for the detection of epileptic seizures uh, from the EG signals based on the standardized area of IMFs. And uh, time frequency image based method, uh, which is actually uh, very suitable uh, for the classification of uh, different, different sleep stages, according to RNK standard and American Academy of Sleep Medicine. And these days, actually, there is a lot of scope of the deep learning and uh, convolution neural network where we use image initial of signal. So this time frequency image is actually gives you a platform where you can convert one dimensional signal like EEG signal into time frequency image. And nicely you can apply this convolution neural network, deep neural network, and uh, you can do a lot of image processing. So that is, you don't need to extract features and direct without features, you can uh, perform the classification. And the mean and standard deviation of Euclidean distances based on the three-dimensional PSR of sub-signals using multivalent transform has been used to uh, classify automatically the human emotions. And uh, that is, uh, thank you very much.